Welcome to SAT 0 to 1. In this lesson, we're learning about the volume. In the SAT, you will be provided with a formula sheet, and that means you don't have to memorize anything as long as you know how it works. So in this lesson, we're going to go through all the volume formulas used in the SAT and provide examples about how to use them. We will first introduce the formula for prism. Prism is a solid shape that is bound on all its sides by a plane faces. It does not matter what the base of the prism looks like, whether it's a triangular prism on the left or the pentagonal prism on the right, the volume of a prism is always equal to base times height. The next shape in our lesson is a special case of the prism called the rectangular prism. A rectangular prism, sometimes also called a cuboid, is a three-dimensional object which has six faces that are rect rectangles. The rectangular prism can be constructed by taking a 2D shape, the rectangle, and extending it along the third dimension, like this. When calculating the volume for rectangular prism, we first need to find the area of the base, which can be found by multiplying the two sides of the base, A times B, and then multiplying the area of the base by the height of the prism to find the volume. So the volume formula for rectangular prism is very simple. Volume equals base times height, B times H. The cube is a special case of rectangular prism. A cube is a three-dimensional solid object bounded by six square faces. And just like the rectangular prism, the volume of a cube is also base times height. Let's call one edge of the cube A. And since all sides of a cube are equal, the area of the base equals a times a times a, so a to the power of 3. A cylinder is a three-dimensional shape consisting of two parallel circular bases joined by a curved surface. The volume of a cylinder can also be found by multiplying the base by the height. And since the base of cylinder is a circle, the area of the base equals pi r squared. And so the volume formula becomes pi r squared times h, where r is the radius and h is the height. A pyramid is a polyhedron formed by connecting a polygonal base and a point, like this. The volume of the pyramid does not matter if the base is a triangle or a square, is always one-third times base times the height. So a square base, the volume is still one-third times space times height. And the next one is a cone. A cone can be formed by rotating a right angle triangle 360 degrees like this. And now we have a cone. The volume of a cone is equal to one-third of the base times h. And since the base of a cone is a circle, so the formula becomes one-third times pi r squared, where r is the radius of the base and h is the height of the cone. Finally, we have a sphere. When we rotate a semicircle 360 degrees like this, a sphere is formed. And the volume for sphere is equal to 4 over 3 pi r to the third power, where r is the radius of the sphere. OK. Here's a summary of the formulas we have just gone through. For the prism and cylinder, the volume is equal to base times height. Of course, when we have a cylinder, the area of the base is pi r squared, since the base is a circle. And for pyramid and cones, the volume is equal to one-third of the base times height. And finally, for the sphere, the volume equals 4 over 3 times pi r to the third. OK, let's now try a practice problem to see how the formulas can help us to solve volume problems in the SAT's exam. A zero is built with the right cylinder and the right circular cones as illustrated in the figure below. What is the volume of the zero? As we can see in the figure, 
we need to sum up the volumes of the two shapes that make up the zero. Firstly, we can find the volume of the cone using the formula 1 third times pi r squared times h. And that's 1 third times pi times 10 squared, that's the radius, times 12, that's the height, which equals 400 pi cubic feet. And then we can find the volume of the cylinder using pi r squared times h, which is pi times 10, the radius squared, times 20, the height, which equals 2,000 pi cubic feet. And finally, we can sum up the two volumes to find the total volume. That's 400 pi cubic feet plus 2,000 pi cubic feet, which is 2,400 cubic feet, which is approximately 7,536 cubic feet. Okay, that's it for this lesson about volumes. I hope it helped. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye.